This is how to update the firmware on your Viofo A119S or A119-CAM. The procedure has 10 steps and I have included it in the description and comments below this video. Step 1 is to download the firmware from the official Viofo website. We're going to do both websites for both dash cams just to show the difference between the files in this demonstration. Currently as of August 11th 2017 the A119S dash cam has a firmware version of 1.7. I suggest right clicking on this link before you download that gives you the option to save the target or save it to a different destination. This is for you to find the file easier and not get it mixed up with maybe previous versions of the firmware. If you really have trouble navigating just select the desktop and save it there. For our demonstration, we're going to put everything in the download folder. You'll note the file name has a zip extension, meaning it's a compressed archive. We're going to talk about that in a moment. They're very tiny files and they won't take very long to download. Now we're going to do A119 firmware. For this dash cam, the newest version of firmware is version 3.1. And when you right click on this file link and save the target as, you will note it is not a zip or compressed file. It is a straight binary, it's a BIN file ready to flash on the dash cam immediately. That's the difference between the two. Why Viofo has done this, I have no idea. So we're going to save this file. Now we're going to locate them in your computer. In this case it's in the download folder. And you can see right away that the A119 binary is ready to go. However, the A119S is compressed. You can't use this file without extraction double click see the file but you'll note you can't do anything with it until you extract this file so look for the extract option and select the destination extraction folder which would be default within itself and here is now the file you can use to flash if you don't do this procedure you cannot flash the A119S just to confirm, we're going to go back. This is the download folder. This is the A119 binary ready to go. This is the newly extracted folder for the A119S. And inside of it contains the binary file for that dash cam. We're going to use this. We need to put this on a micro SD card. I suggest just to eliminate problems when you're doing flashing to use a 16 gigabyte micro SD card or a 32 gigabyte. These smaller cards already come with a FAT32 file structure so you don't have to do anything to it except copy the file. Don't use a 64 gig or a 128 gig. It won't work. And do not use SanDisk Ultra micro SD cards. They are not compatible with this dash cam or any other. Many people have been inserting their micro SD cards, their smaller one, inside the dash cam, connecting a USB cable and trying to transfer the binary file to it. 
and you can do that there, there's not a problem with that however there is a problem when you're not doing it safely and you're not ejecting safely because you can corrupt the file within the dash cam so to eliminate that we're going to use a USB adapter Lexar gives you one when you buy a Lexar card and if you don't get this specific adapter you can use the SD adapter and insert it into a reader into your computer and if you don't have that you can buy a third party this is a 3-in-1 uh, USB micro USB and I believe that's a lightning port for Mac this is fifteen dollars get yourself one of these it's USB 3 and then you won't be struggling with the dash cam itself so with the card inserted connect it to your computer wait for it to be detected and view the contents of the card the key is you should only have one folder initially upon opening it if you've used this card inside your dash cam to record videos it will actually contain a movie folder and you will have your clips from your dash cam in there you don't have to delete these it doesn't hurt in any way during the firmware update procedure the key is to be in the root of the folder the root structure of the card so you can add the binary file to it so for that we go back into our firmware that we have extracted to the binary file and drag it or copy it to the removable disk that you've just connected to your computer. When you've done that, verify by clicking on the removable disk and see that the binary matching your model number of your dash cam is there. Once that's done, you're ready to remove the USB adapter with the card from your computer. To do that, close your file explorer, look at the bottom right hand corner of your computer screen in the tray area for a safe to remove icon. Once found, left click on this icon and wait for an eject option to appear. On different operating systems, on different computers, Mac, PC, the words will be different, the menus will be different, but the function is the same. Look for this eject to safely cut power to the USB adapter and then wait for the actual message that it's safe to remove. You can now safely retrieve your micro SD card without corrupting it without damaging the card or damaging your USB port if you just pull it out without doing this. Once done you're going to insert it into your dash cam keeping in mind now that there is a slot inside your dash cam to fit the micro SD card. If it doesn't slide in easily you're missing the slot. You might actually be it might have been bent so take a good look inside the slot to make sure uh, it's clear put it all the way in till it clicks keeping in mind we're doing this with it off you must never insert or remove a micro SD card in any dash cam while it's running while it's powered that will corrupt the card over time eventually it'll destroy the card but if there's no power, there's no damage. Now we're going to do this in the workbench with an external 5 volt 2 amp adapter. If you don't have anything to power your dash cam with 2 amps in your house, just connect it back into your vehicle. The key is once you connect it, do not touch the dash cam. You will note the record light will blink slowly initially and then it will increase there we go it's blinking very quickly and this procedure 
will repeat. Don't touch any buttons, don't disconnect the power at this time or you will corrupt the firmware. And then finally the dash cam will actually restart itself. So there we are, it has restarted. At this stage I would recommend just letting it run for maybe 15 seconds noting that the record light is working it's it's actually writing a file to the SD card just to prove it's working press the record button to stop recording you'll get your alert beep press the menu button to enter the settings press the left arrow or record button again and on the firmware setting press the center button to view and you will see the version of firmware that you've just successfully updated to. Now you're not finished yet. From here, press the menu button, press the record button, and move to the default settings. You must erase the previous settings from the previous version of the firmware to ensure you're starting fresh with the new firmware so no possibility of corruption it will exist after you've done this. The disadvantage is you have to spend the time to go back and put everything, uh, customize all of your options again. So go ahead and perform this function every single time you do an update. Many people don't bother, but then again, do they have problems later with their firmware? By doing this, you ensure you will not and your dash cam will restart a final time and it will be ready to go. At this stage because you've now flashed your dash cam with a new update you want to take that card out. If that's the only card you have at 32 gig that's fine you can leave it where it is but if you have a larger capacity what you want to do now is disconnect the power wait for the record light to go out draining the capacitors, it would write a file to the card at the end, eject your card, and then insert your larger capacity card, the permanent card that you would have. And then go through and do all your customization and settings. For the A119, the procedure is identical except you're using the different binary file. That's it. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, post them below this video on how to update your firmware or if you're stuck. And watch for my soon to be released repair videos on all the most common issues with this dash cam that people are struggling with. Keeping in mind if you find this is beyond you, simply return the dash cam back to the vendor or claim warranty.